So this is a film that I've heard a lot spoken about and I've known about for a long time. <clears throat> and I remember it being released, like when it was first released, and uh, it getting a lot of buzz and it definitely catching my attention immediately. Um, I There was one time I tried to watch it, but I only got through like five minutes and, uh, and never started it up again. Uh, that was a few years ago. But uh, it's, it's always been a film that I've wanted to watch. And it's always been a film, like I said, that got talked about a lot and always sparked my interest for what it is. Um, basically, it's a love letter to Giallo films, uh, Italian Giallo films. And it, it kind of satires them. It, uh, it, it plays out semi-seriously, but very much as a joke. And actually, after watching it, which I'll get into, I pretty much view this as mostly a comedy because um, the, sh the shit that just that goes on in this film is just so bonkers to even be taken seriously and um, it's a love letter to Jallo for sure but um, the things are just so ridiculous and they, they really crank it to 11 with their satire and um, the tropes that they really joke with when it comes to Jallo films. Uh, Jallo little history lesson uh, means yellow in Italian and giallo films are basically Italian horror mysteries that are based off of novels which they call giallo novels because when novels get older the pages start to turn yellow and that's where the term giallo came from uh, from my research anyway that's what I know about uh, giallo films and giallo mystery novels so um, if I'm wrong about any of that yell at me in the comments now I think this is a Canadian release I bought it used and I like how the slip, like the, the little paper, comes double-sided. I actually like this one better, so I might be using that one, uh, which has il editor in Italian. And uh, this one's cool too, but I don't always like the whole jumble character artwork. Um, sometimes I usually go for, like, simplicity, and that's quite a throwback to, uh, you know, classic Italian marketing right there. So I might use that. But enough about the Blu-ray, let's talk about the friggin' film itself. Um, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Um, what I'm, to start off, what I'm gonna say about this may sound completely negative, but it's not. This film is an absolute hot mess. This film is a mess. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. Dis disrespectively. Um, this film's a mess. <laughs> in such an entertaining way it it throws a lot at the wall it throws a lot at the audience and it goes for many ideas um do they satire giallo well yes but do they really throw it in your face and what they're satiring yes like to the max um you know every single trope like Women screaming at absolutely nothing for minutes, you got that in here. Uh, men slapping women and then five seconds later, uh, everybody just going about like nothing happened at all, they satire that. Tarantulas, definitely in here a lot. Misogyny warning, uh, if you know that shit triggers you, stay away. Uh, there's definitely a lot of trigger moments in this film, obviously, because they're friggin' satiring Jallo. So if that's not up your alley, if you're easily offended, stay away from something like this. But, um, yeah, they just go balls to the wall with, uh, with satiring Jallo. Now, when I watch Jallo films, I watch them subtitled. This is fully in English. It's filmed and written in English, and it's, uh, well... It's not dubbed kind of thing, like nobody's speaking Italian. Now everybody kind of has Italian names. There's Bella, there's uh, Josephine, I think. Um, the editor, they pretty much just call him the editor throughout the film. And um, it, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's gory. Actually, one of my favorite scenes that absolutely made me laugh is they're watching a Jallo film because basically this film is... A film about making films essentially and <laughs> there's just one playing out and this guy comes up to a woman and he's like uh, you know 50 bucks that this is a mask and he tries to take her face off and he literally does and he's holding her skin and she's just sitting there without a face and her eyes are like bouting back and forth 
and uh, all of a sudden he's just like, oh shit, it's okay, I'll just like stick it back here, and he's sticking this the, her face back, and then the next scene it shows her normal again, as if he actually put her skin back and like put her face literally back on her. Um, it's 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 stupid, <laughs> but but it's hilarious. It 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 only works because of the situation going on, like ridiculous films within a movie about ridiculous films. So that's the only reason why it works. Any other way, it just wouldn't. Um, packed with nudity, um, which is good. <laughs> and uh, like a lot of it, I mean. And uh, yeah, it just, um, it really, how could I put this? Um, sometimes it, it it's like overbearing um, in, in its spoof, like the spoofs are just so extreme that you almost can't take them seriously. And, uh, sometimes it feels like you're wondering what they're going for exactly, um, tone wise, but, um, but it's, and, and like I said, when I say it's a hot mess, I mean like the flow and the structure of this film is just absolutely everywhere. Um, it's not one note at all. There's some um, actors, there's some people in it that are familiar, like the guy from uh, that's famous from Human Centipede 2 is in this film playing a priest. And um, one character who I actually found the most to be like your stereotypical giallo female lead is this woman named Josephine who uh, is given the best dialogue and everything that comes out of her mouth just feels super like soaked in giallo um, <clears throat> like lore kind of thing. Plot wise though, there's not like a ton to say and a lot of it would be pretty spoiler territory, but it's basically just follows this editor who was extremely famous for cutting Jallo films and then he has a hand accident. Um, you'll see a lot of chopped fingers in this film too, uh, plays out throughout the plot in many ways. Um, and then he, <clears throat> he basically like loses his talent and ability to to edit because of the the hand accident and uh he's working f with like b films and he's making a lot of like trashy cinema and um all these murders start to uh come up again with the jello tropes you got the killer in black you've got a lot of black gloves you've got the uh the flip razor blades um a lot of jello shots like with um like knives like on on people on victims eyes like right about the stab through the eye and the 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 way giallo films are are mostly shot if you if you're a fan of the the giallo subgenre kind of thing you know exactly what I'm talking about um and uh yeah and then it just turns into a murder mystery with a lot of gore and a lot of uh TNA if you will um a lot of bush in this film too if you know what I'm talking about um, which is good because a Jallo film wouldn't be a Jallo film uh, unless you got a lot of nude women with giant ash giant ass bushes. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a great hour and a half of uh, splatter fun, and I definitely recommend it if you know your Jallo films, if you know, or even if you have an idea of like that kind of industry and um, you know. <laughs> that uh, style, you'll get a kick out of it. Or if you just like horror and exploitation films in general, then then it's uh, it's pretty much uh, up any fan's alley in my opinion. It's, uh, it's that kind of movie, so. That's all I got on that. Uh, subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you like to listen to my voice or if you like my film reviews. Um, watch the rest that are on my channel and there will be lots more to come. So until then, take care and cheers.